this is a good place to start getting in the habit of just knowing that solving for X isn't always the best move. We could do it, but it's also nice to just notice the relationship between what they gave us and what we want, right? So, okay, they gave us that 4X is equal to three. They want 24X. How do I get from 4X to 24X, right? Well, I know my times tables. I would multiply by six. So if 4X times six is equal to 24X, then how about we do that to both sides of the equation, right? Basic algebra, three times six is 18. And that's the answer, that's it, that's the whole thing, right? So I could do that without a scratch paper, that's all something that's just kind of automatic. You wanna train your brain to understand numbers that way. If you don't already see that kind of thing, it is almost certainly because you do not know your times tables as confidently as you should. It's very obvious to me that four and 24 have this, this thing in common, they have a, a factor in common. So that's useful. Now, if you want to do it the long way, right, we could just take our 4x equals 3. We could divide by 4. And as far as fractions go, it's not the worst one, right? It's 3 fourths. You could also put that into your calculator and get 0.75. And then what is 24 times 0.75? Again, calculator will save you. It'll give us 18. So that's fine, too. I don't think one way or the other really makes a difference on a question like this in terms of time. But I do think that if you don't see that multiplied by six thing that I showed you originally, you're going to have some trouble when these questions get harder. A lot of math is about just noticing patterns and noticing that four and 24 have a pattern, have a six in common basically to get us from one to the other. That's the kind of basic arithmetic and, and maybe mental math that we're going to need for some of the harder patterns that are going to be much more difficult to spot.